Hello and welcome to our introduction to software engineering course. Uh, my name is David Owens, second. Um, if you have any questions throughout this course, go ahead and pop over to the CC++ forums on 3D Buzz, and uh, either myself or someone else will be able to uh, hopefully answer your questions. Uh, if you have any questions specifically for me or you need to get a hold of me for any reason, uh, my name on the 3D Buzz forums is Owens D. So you can send me a PM and I'll be sure to check those every once in a while. So what is software engineering? Uh, the first thing I'm going to note is it's not about programming. This is a common misconception that people just learning software engineering or computer science, uh, they, they think it's all about programming. When in fact, uh, it doesn't even have to be about programming at all. Uh, one of the common parallels that we that you'll often hear if you take any other uh, courses or you do any intro courses at a, a college or anything is the comparison with uh, telescopes and astronomy. So astronomy is study of the stars and telescopes allow us to study those stars better. Well the same thing is true here uh, with software engineering. Software uh, engineering is about the, well we'll talk about a little bit more what it's about, but programming languages help us study uh, software engineering better. So what's it about? I kind of have three high-level things. Um, I think it's about the design of software, how we interact with various hardware systems, and the development and maintenance of software systems or programs. Uh, you're gonna, if you want to wrap it up in kind of a one sentence, it's basically about taking what uh, a human thinks or a human process and turn it in into a way that can be represented in computer instructions or some uh, mechanical device that automates that process for us. So let's get a go over a brief history of software engineering. Uh, notice I kind of took a high level of uh, information from Wikipedia so if you want to go in there you can dig down deeper. Uh, there's a link there for you. But uh, let's go all the way back to 1801. And there's this guy named Joseph, oops, sorry, Joseph Marie Jacquard who created uh, the sewing loom uh, called the Jacquard loom. And basically what it did is it took a punch card and it read that punch card and was able to form different types of weaves uh, based on the pattern in the punch card. So we kind of see a uh, early example of using um, software engineering techniques to control a machine to automate a process for us. If we jump up to 1822, we get this guy named uh, Charles Babbage. Uh, he comes up with this prototype for a difference engine, which basically was a, a fancy prototype for a machine to expand polynomials. Uh, he also later comes up with a few other designs, one called the analytical engine, which is a little more uh, a little more complicated than his first difference engine. So in 1842 we get uh, Ada Lovelace. Um, she is, for all intents and purposes, uh, considered the first programmer. Um, she took uh, Babbage's theoretical uh, designs around the analytical machine uh, and used that to calculate the Bernoulli numbers. Um, if you want more information, go check it out on the web. Basically, it's a mathematical uh, series of numbers. Uh, but she took, uh, the interesting thing is, there was actually no Babbage machine that actually worked, but she uh, took the prototype designs from Babbage had and actually came up with the instructions on, uh, the instructions to run through the machine to actually calculate those numbers, which is pretty interesting. So we're gonna jump all the way up to the 1940s now, and this is where we start to actually see uh, the beginning of modern day uh, computing. Um, back then, uh, programmers actually had to uh, write the instructions out for the computer in zeros and ones. Uh, they realized that really sucks, <laughs> and so then they came up with assembly language, and the assembly language was a literal translation of the zeros and ones, the groupings of those that actually perform an instruction on the computer, to a uh, a mapping of a symbol. So you might have a MOV or a move symbol uh, that corresponds to some zeros and ones. So software engineers decided uh, you still have to be really smart and it's really complicated to 
programming that, so they started creating uh, higher level languages. And this is when we started seeing uh, Fortran, Lisp, COBOL, you might have heard of some of those. Um, so we started seeing some advancements in software engineering, which allows uh, a broader set of people to actually uh, partake in the programming of, of, uh, of computers and machines. And we start to develop some of our uh, higher level concepts to abstract out uh, concepts instead of speaking in only zeros and ones or low level languages. So we jump up to the 1970s, and we actually, this is where we actually see most of our uh, modern programming paradigms uh, being created. Uh, we get languages such as C, Pascal, Smalltalk, which is actually a somewhat object-oriented language, and Scheme. Then we go to the 1980s, and uh, this is when object-oriented programming really starts to become mainstream. Uh, we get the advent of C++ here, um, which actually was originally called C with classes. Um, and it's the successor to C. Uh, in the 1990s, we start to see a push for more rapid application development, or RAD languages, uh, being developed. So we see Python, Ruby, Java, and these are all in even higher level language than C. Whereas in C, you might need to deal with uh, memory management more. Um, in these languages, that stuff's starting to actually be taken care of for you. And in the 90s is when we actually see the internet actually starting to take place with uh, with consumer people as well. And then we jump to the 2000s and basically present day, um, where we are continuing to evolve the ways in which we actually interact with hardware. Uh, we, come out, we have more advanced uh, concepts. We are starting to do a lot of introspection on code, uh, basically uh, runtime reflection, where the program itself actually uh, analyzes uh, the code that you have and performs different operations on there. And we also see a bigger uh, push on data-driven programming, uh, reading in XML type files or uh, JSON files to actually control how the program works. And we see some uh, new languages coming out as well. Uh, we see C-sharp, um, F-sharp, and, and Scala starting to come out. So let's go ahead and give a brief overview of C++. Uh, C++ will be the language that we will be using uh, to help us study software engineering. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a mixture of, well, basically C++ will allow us to dig in uh, into the more intricate, int intricate topics like memory management and pointers and how memory is actually stored on the computer and how it's accessed. Uh, accessed while still being high level enough that uh, we can talk about object-oriented programming and some of the uh, more more recent um, types of programming paradigms as well. So back in 1979, there's this guy named uh, Bjorn Strasup, and I always say his name kind of funny. Uh, he begins work on uh, C with classes. Basically, the problem was C was a well, there were some other object-oriented languages at the time, but they were really slow. Um, and then there were some other languages that were really fast to execute on the on hardware, but they were really low level and they were really hard to use. So uh, Straussup wanted to kind of take the best of the object-oriented world and the best of the low-level world and kind of merge them together so that we could have fast executing object-oriented programming. And so his original work started with uh, basically just extensions to the C programming language, and it's called C with classes. In 1983, uh, C, plus, or C with classes gets uh, kind of rebranded and to just become called uh, C++, which was kind of a uh, funny spin-off where the plus plus is an incremental change to C. And we'll actually see the plus plus operators actually when we start uh, digging more into the, the C++ language. Uh, 1985, we see C++ actually get its first commercial release and Strauss publishes the first edition of the C++ programming language book, which is basically a reference reference guide for the C++ language. Jump up to 1989, uh, we see the next version of C++ come out. It has new uh, new features in it. Uh, multiple inheritance and abstract classes are two of them. There's a, a few more. And then all the way up into 1988, uh, it takes basically, what, 29 years? 
uh, 20 years, sorry, <laughs> 20 years to become a officially standard. There's a, a group of, or a large group of um, different corporations and people got together and actually standardized what C++ should look like. And this first uh, standard of C++ is commonly referred to as uh, C++ 98. There's a new standard of C++ that was uh, thought to be coming out uh, by the end of 2009 called C++ OX, where X was the year in which it was supposed to be finalized. Um, but that's still currently under development and they're still working, trying to get that all standardized and some new features uh, in the language added. So that about covers up our brief uh, run through on the history of software engineering. Uh, in our next video, we'll actually start taking a look at what C++ actually looks like. Thanks.